Hi, Judith. All right, um, I think we can get started. Um, my name is uh, Stephen Oundo. I happen to be a nephew of the late Hilary Ngueno, and I'm honored and privileged uh, to be with you today as, uh, I would say, a co-host, uh, Master of Ceremony, as we celebrate the life of our dear, late dad, uncle, professional colleague, Hilary Ngueno. Uh, unfortunately, we lost Hillary on the 7th of July, uh, which was just last week. And we felt it would be really great if we took an opportunity like today and came together and shared all the great positives um, which we did experience while he was alive. Now, we've had uh, quite a number of people who would have loved to speak today, but uh, because of the limitation of time, we only do have a few selected uh, distinguished presenters who will be able to share a bit with us today. Let me also take this opportunity um, to introduce the immediate family members who are here. I would like to start with my elder cousin, uh, Amolo Ngueno, all well known to you. Uh, Amolo is uh, Hillary's firstborn daughter. Um, she will also be a panelist and will be giving her an opportunity actually to introduce uh, the subject of the day. We also have uh, Betty Nangueno, the second born daughter of Hillary. They are both my elder cousins. Among the participants, I have taken note that we do have our dear auntie, who is the mother of Amalo and Bettina, Fla. Auntie Fla, we've taken cognizance of your presence. Now, we had uh, officially planned to start at two. So two o'clock, I would say, is just in a minute. And um, going in strict accordance with the way Hillary used to conduct his life, time was of the essence. So let me take this opportunity to introduce Amalo. Um, she's the eldest daughter, as I've just mentioned, to say a few words. So Amalo, please be most welcome. OK, thank you, uh, Stephen. Um, oh, so we're, we're also for everybody's information, we're recording this um, session and it's also live streaming on YouTube, which I think if you want to share with people, it should be appearing at the top of your screen and you could share with others. Um, so I just wanted to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, I think um, as Stephen has mentioned, my father passed away on July 7th. Um, with all of his family surrounding him. He had suffered from a long illness and had not been well for at least the past two years, um, during which we received um, warm messages from many people on this call. And we're grateful for those messages and visits that took place in the past couple of years. Um, the purpose of our meeting today is not to um, mourn but to celebrate and we thank you for, sh for sharing this time with us. Um, we want to think about how Hillary contributed to each of our lives and um, hear from his friends both near and far and, and colleagues both recent and 
um, I don't want to say ancient, but further, further back um, to, to understand the impact he's made on, on your life. So um, I, I'm glad to, to see you all here and look forward to um, hearing from you. Um, uh, Stephen, I think you can. Continue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Amalo. Um, it's very nice to hear those uh, introductory remarks from you um, as our eldest cousin in the family. So we still look up to you and I would say you're the closest to who would be able to fill in the very big shoes of our great dad. Um, Bettina, um, please allow me to let you at least uh, say a word at this beginning. I, I've still earmarked you to give the the thank you at the end, but let's still please, please hear your voice at the beginning. So Betty Nangueno, uh, the floor is yours. Daktari. Thanks, Stephen. Um, thank you all for being here. It's really nice to see you and see your faces and know that you're in attendance and uh, welcome to this celebration of my father's life. Okay. All right. Um, without any further ado, and the approach I'll do is I'll be introducing the speakers at the time of speaking. So I'm not going to go through the list of who we have right now, but you will, I'll be unveiling the cloth as they speak. There is no specific order um, because you are also distinguished. So um, I'll just be, uh, the only person I've opted to start with was the first who, who joined us. So uh, Mr. Vitalis Musebe, uh, Vistalis Musebe used to work with Weekly Review. Um, I actually also had the opportunity of working with him there while I was doing my internship there. He's distinguished within this world of journalism and he's definitely one of the great descendants of Hillary when it comes to the download on journalism. So without any further ado, uh, Vitalis Musebe, I would like to give you the floor. Um, because of the essence of time, I will not want to interrupt anybody as they speak, but we're trying to keep ourselves to three minutes. I know three minutes is very short, but let's try and do our very best. So over to you, Vitalis. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. I, I hope you're hearing me. Yes. Are you hearing me? I, I'll assume if I can hear you, you can be heard. So carry on. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Yes, I do uh, appreciate that uh, uh, would, uh, this is a celebration. But for me, uh, I think as a lawyer, I need to start by actually expressing my, my condolences to the family and to say that uh, I, I did not just lose a, a person I worked for, but I also lost a good friend. Uh, Hillary was a friend. And uh, many years after in retirement, I used to routinely uh, check on him at the Pioneer House. And I think the last, uh, the last time I called to check on him, uh, Flau uh, told me he was uh, not quite uh, able to pick my phone and I was sad because that person that you are describing just as Hillary, to me was my professional father. I personally owe a great deal of professional progression and advancement to Hillary. I joined the weekly review just after one year with only a diploma from the Kenya Institute of Mass Communication. And I, if I had not joined the weekly review, I probably will have remained an officer in the Department of Information and Broadcasting in government. But thanks to the decision and the opportunity that I got to work for the weekly review. I advanced both my career and my professional credentials from a diploma <laughs> holder, to a master's degree in journalism secured on a full scholarship in the United Kingdom. Uh, my career was accordingly boosted. Uh, no, after my 12 years with Hillary, I went on to join the Kenya Television Network as a head of news. And there I also excelled because of uh, our own uh, experience with Hillary, because Hillary was uh, a stickler for excellence. I became uh, 
a very informed uh, uh, head of news at KTN. And the bravery is one attribute that Hillary bequeathed to me as a journalist. And so within one year, <laughs> I, I presume I became uh, over brave. And for the first time in the history of this country, because of my background with the weekly review, I was able to steer KTN to become the top uh, television uh, station for news. And of course, I overstepped my, my, my limitation. And uh, within a year, uh, I was told to get out of KTN. But I think even after getting out of KTN, I believe that uh, we had already uh, 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 left a mark in terms of uh, improvement of uh, the news uh, output for KTN. And therefore, Weekly Review for me was not just a, a publication because within the period that I worked for Weekly Review is probably the only longest time I worked for any employer. Because after the Weekly Review, I joined KTN for one year. And then thereafter, I also had the opportunity to work for the Committee of Experts that concluded the Constitution of Kenya 2010 as the Deputy Director for Information and, uh, and Media. And of course, I remember that there was a lot of, uh, there was massive information outflow from the committee that we controlled. And therefore, uh, after I wound up my career as the uh, Editor-in-Chief of the Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, so you can see that the impact of Hillary on me was personal, uh, personally very fulfilling. And I remember him not just as, a, as a, my boss. And I remember that uh, Hillary was such a, uh, he inspired so much our way. You know, some of us, I know that uh, I'll maybe speaking for others, that uh, we, uh, the, 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 the presence of Hillary uh, in our newsroom. I know Steve, you are, sometimes you are there. It is sometimes an afters, you know, because it was such a powerful uh, individual that uh, all of us in the weekly review are tempted to do things the way he did. We are tempted to think like him. We are tempted to talk like him, like him. And some of us, including me, are tempted to wear a beard that Hillary used to wear. Yeah, I know Hillary used to wear a beard, and I presume that beard I, is, I could stay without fear of contradiction that uh, he never, we, ne we used to say he kept a beer that never saw a razor. So, <laughs> so Hillary uh, was, was much more than just a boss to me. And uh, I know that we wanted to think like him and he fashioned us, you know, I'm talking about myself, I'm talking about Kwendo Panga, I'm talking about Washira Waruru, I'm talking about Masharia Gaido, I am talking about Mutek Njau, you know, the guys I worked with, that uh, uh, we were all held in awe by Hillary's presence. Uh, when he came in, I remember Steve, there was a lady called Rose Shitaka. And Rose uh, would, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would, uh, would whisper to us through the intercom that HBN <laughs> was, uh, was just getting into the newsroom. And I remember that we almost froze. So when he came in, if we started by criticizing any one of us or any of our stories, we all froze. There was no talking. There was no. There was no talking back to Hillary. You know, Hillary was a guy, a man, a hero for me, a hero, and I am. I am certain. I'm basically certain by the fact that the hero that Hillary was, uh, apart from being recognized by our media fraternity as a hero. The state called Kenya fell short of honoring and respecting Hillary's contribution to our society, to our journalism, to our, the history and, 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 and the current affairs that he controlled through the weekly review. I know there are friends of mine even here in Webuye, where I am now, wow. who came and to come and tell me that they still keep a copy of the weekly review from inception, they are proud. Hillary's impact is in homes, is in libraries. Yeah, it is in, in libraries and the homes and individuals and schools and colleges, it's so and universities. So for me, I conclude by saying I have had a lifetime influence by Hillary 
that I will miss and I let God, the creator, honor him, even if the world around us may not have honored him. Thank you very much, Steve. All right. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Vitalis. I have heard you use the words bravery and excellence as what you derived from Hillary. And uh, you also used a very key word, attempted. You didn't match what he was in terms of excellence and bravery, but you made the attempt. So we do do appreciate that. So thank you very much on that note. Now, so that the, the, the rest of the panelists can get an idea at least who will be next, I'll just be mentioning the next two. So right now, um, if Rose Kimotho is present, um, I would like her uh, to come on board. And then thereafter, we will have Jim Adams. So Jim, just know that after Rose has spoken, you will be next. Uh, Rose, are you there? Rose Kimodo? Yes, I am. Hi. <laughs> yes. Um, I think what I'll do, I'll allow you to do a quick brief self-introduction and allow you to make uh, yeah, your quick uh, comments with regards to your experience with Hillary. Thank you very much, Rose. And we'd like to thank you for making time to be with us today. Well, thank you very much for inviting me to say a few words. Um, it was, for me, well, my name is Rose Kimotho and I worked, I joined, Hillary was my first employer. I left School of Journalism in 1978 and uh, we were invited two students to go and work for weekly review, which was the greatest honor. You cannot begin to imagine the kind of honor it is for a student who has not yet graduated to be offered an opportunity to work for the great Hillary Ngueno. That time he was the publisher of Weekly Review and Nairobi Times. And Peter Karethi and I walked up and I remember our office was off um, Moy Avenue uh, on the way just next to Koja Mosque on the second floor, I think it was the third floor. Um, and I recall just being breathless to be in the presence of such a great man. We had studied him. We had, well, we, everybody's ambition was to work uh, for Hillary for the weekly review. And of course, when we walked in, you came off the lift and there were two sides of the building. On the left, you walked into a newsroom, which was all, uh, in those days, there were typewriters. I think a lot of people do not understand, do not remember, you actually typed on a typewriter and then moved to the next page. And the room was full of the clutter of typewriters. And on the right was Hillary's office. Now imagine this, on the left, uh, in those days you went out to get, you got assigned stories, went out and got back at 3 p.m. and then got on these typewriters. And there was so much activity in the newsroom and smoke, in those days it was okay to smoke in a newsroom. So the place was full of smoke and men, there were very few ladies. I think I was the only one, Sarah Eldakin was my boss. Um, and then all this hectic activity until six o'clock, it was like before they launch a rocket to, to space. And then everybody then went to a bar called Connie Pot on the street um, to have a white cup. But Hillary was in another wing. Once he walked into Hillary's office, it was all clean, no smoke, no typewriter, no sound, just his desk full of papers. And when I walked there to meet him the first time, walking to the presence of this man, I think at that time I knew this is the side of media I wanted to be. I wanted to be on the side of Hillary. Uh, he, you rarely saw him, at least I didn't, because I didn't work for Weekly Review. I worked for Nairobi Times with Sarah. He was, when you ever came across him, the one thing I noticed about him is that he actually really listened to you. When you talked, as great as he was, he gave you his undivided attention. And then he, he understood, he understood human nature and he understood nervousness, he understood when you were unsure and he gave you guidance, he, he gave you support. Um, and he was understanding, he had this, without saying so, I mean, he would be very busy, he had no time to waste, but when he allocated you his time, he allocated you his 100% attention. And it's something I learned in life when I started my own companies. I listened to my staff, I because everybody has something to say. And I, I tried to emulate him in supporting and encouraging my, uh, my staff. I left, I didn't stay long because I, I think the newsroom as it was then wasn't, I wasn't cut out to work in the, in the, in the newsroom. And my years later, when I started my own company, my own media house, I remember interacting with Hillary. At that time he was starting, he was running STV. And what people do not, do not know to date is that he's a man of many firsts. I remember STV was the first TV station 
to even have the concept of community broadcasting. He set up transmitters, individual transmitters in various towns in Kisumu, in Nairobi. And his concept was long before digital came, which is what digital is today, addressing particular communities. So a transmitter in Kisumu uh, with the concept of transmit, transmitting news relevant to Kisumu. He, cho he chose the highest building and set up a transmitter there in Nairobi. The transmitter was at an SSF building. There was a transmitter in Mombasa. So the concept of giving people local content, content that's relevant to them, started with him way back in 1995. He, in 1995, got the rights for the UEFA championship. Nobody knows that. He started off movie of the year. Uh, movie of the, it was sponsored by Cousins, I remember in those days. He, he had UEFA championships. He, he started business news before anybody else. I remember he asked me to recommend uh, the first person to, for the business news, and it was Judy. Judy, who is today the, a permanent secretary in this government. And uh, she was presenting business news uh, at, at STV. So he introduced, there were so many firsts that he had. He came up with the first concept of integrated media, where he owned uh, print and your broadcasting. It's a pity he didn't get into radio. So for me, he's, he championed, he opened the way for a lot of us who went into media. He, what I learned from him is, first of all, Hillary was fiercely independent. Um, he wasn't going to be influenced by either side of the political divide. And he paid a price for that in my view, because when you're fiercely independent, people sus suspect you. Uh, they think you're on my side in those days the opposition suspect you. He was very cynical about uh, opposition politicians. And I think what has happened since then has borne him out. We, he, he worried about this ethnic cocoon. So we see that is what is there today. Um, he was extremely principled and he had values uh, for greater good. I remember in weekly review, he refused to take on tobacco advertising. Years later, when I started Kameme, I refused to air this betting, you know, this betting craze where poor people are asked to send in 100 bob, 50 bob, and so you, you, you impoverish millions of people, poor Kenyans, because who are the other ones who participate? And you enrich just maybe 10 millionaires. I refuse to take on uh, betting advertising on Kameme, that, those betting games. And, I, and my inspiration was always Hillary. Hillary stood for what he believed in. Whether to, in those days, people be, tobacco advertising was major, but he refused to take it on for weekly review. He had principles, he had values. He knew it's, it's what's good for society. And I've tried to emulate what he stands for. You may not get to be a millionaire at the end of the day because you stand for principles. He had foresight. He saw Kenya, what we see today in the digital era. In those days, were well, the days of better cup. I think satellite broadcasting was just arriving. But he already foresaw community service TV. He foresaw uh, targeting news to audiences. He foresaw having local programming. He started actually way before other people came on. So um, for me, it's been an inspiration. It's an inspiration when I started uh, uh, K24. It's an inspiration when I started Kameme FM. And the weird thing is the he went through a lot of financial problems at the time because it was 1995, wow. if you remember, that's when um, the shilling collapsed. But uh, the people who bought out STV, uh, I think, uh, are the same people who bought out Kameme and K24. So there are very similarities, many similarities when I look at his life and mine. But the biggest thing is that he's been an inspiration in my life and, and the impact he has had, we can feel it throughout in all people in all, uh, you know, many professions and all generations. And I just want to extend my condolences to the family and to everybody. Thank you for inviting me. All right. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Rose Kimodo. You've actually uh, said a few very powerful things about him being a first in everything. A lot of people know him about the business side, the political side, but not too many people knew about him in the sports side, as you've mentioned about the, the rights for the UEFA. And maybe just for those who don't know, in 1990, during the World Cup, he recorded every single World Cup game and watched every single World Cup game in Italy. Now, um, I had mentioned we'll be having uh, Jim Adams uh, next. And uh, it's also good for, for the next speaker to be prepared. So uh, Crocker Snow, just know that you'll be taking the floor after uh, Jim Adams. So for the time being, let us welcome Jim Adams. I feel like um, introducing you will be doing a disservice because you're so, so, so part of the family. So I'll allow you just one liner of self-introduction and thereafter you can uh, give your tribute. So thank you very much, Jim.
the floor is yours. No, thank you, Stephen. I'll explain. I was uh, I was the World Bank's representative in Kenya from 1985 to 1988, and that was an important time, I think, for for what Hillary was doing, but also for Kenya. And let me talk. I think everybody today is going to talk a little about two Hillarys, so I'll try to do it quickly. There was one, the professional Hillary, the leader Hillary, and the other was the friend Hillary. And I think one of the things that was exceptional about Hillary was he played both of these roles. And certainly on the professional Hillary, we'll hear about his leadership in publication, his leadership in, in the TV industry, where you know he really, he really did so much to open up the TV system. And later in life, his role as an historian, talking about, talking about Kenya and the, the, the history of Kenya and how that was important in terms of not only where Kenya had been, but also where it was going. Um, in this professional Hillary, I have to say at the time I, I arrived in Kenya, the bank and the government weren't talking to each other. And I met Hillary through a friend, Dunstan Y. And, and Hillary throughout my time in Kenya at the professional level was an enormous source of advice and guidance. He, he, he was so open and free with his time because not because he wanted to do anything special for the bank, but I think he saw it was important that the bank better understood Kenya. And he, he, he worked with me on that issue. He th I think he thought it was important, not just at the narrow Kenya level, but at the African level, Hillary had many views on the bank and how the bank could be, be improved and, and increase its impact in, in, the, in the African region. He felt very strongly that the bank didn't use Kenyan capacity enough. And he made quite clear, not only at his personal level, but more broadly that he felt that, that Kenyans had to contribute more to the bank's thinking. He also felt very strongly that the bank needed more Africans in the bank. And these were issues we talked about a lot, but most important for me, he was a regular advisor on key issues we faced. And I'd remind people at the professional level, it wasn't an easy time in the mid eighties to be a journalist. Um, you know, the government uh, at that point was not as open as it is today with all the problems of today um, certainly at the news level, there was great sensitivity. And Hillary had this remarkable ability to tell the truth, but to tell it in a way that was effective, not only with the opponents of the government, but also that the Weekly Review got full attention and full readership from members of the government to understand his perspective on what was happening. And so I think, you know, that professional Hillary, I mean, Hillary was a giant at the professional level in Kenya throughout his life and throughout all of his roles. And so I think that role is clear. But I'd also like to add, as I'm sure many will, about the personal Hillary. Um, Hillary was always prepared to meet. Um, he, he combined our meetings. We were regular lunch companions. I'd go to Pioneer House, pick him up, and we'd go to a little Italian restaurant uh, where he would make every effort to solve all my problems, to explain all the things I didn't understand, and spend enormous amounts of time with me. And that was a relationship that continued even after I left Kenya. Um, I had the opportunity through my career to, to transit Kenya for the, for the really 25, 30 years after I worked um, on Kenya. And throughout that period, Hillary was always available to go to lunch. Uh, we had a regular lunch when I arrived with Harris Moulet, Joe Gothango, and Hillary. And we would manage within an hour, an hour, I have two hours to solve all the problems of Kenya throughout that period. And I think that again reflected both Hillary's enormous interest in getting Kenya right and improving Kenya, but also his enormous commitment to a friendship where by any standards, you know, his career was a lot more important and impactful than mine. And so, you know, as, as we think about Hillary and as we reflect on Hillary, I simply want, you know, to record both of these areas that Hillary was such a giant. And finally, I just want to send my regards. I know how important Hillary's family was to him to the family. This is a difficult time and we can, I can only hope that, you know, as one steps back, reflecting on all the good times with Hillary, and I know with everyone there were many good times, that that can somehow make his passing a little easier. So thank you very much uh, for letting me speak today and participate in this important memorial for Hillary. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jim. Uh, we as a, the family of Hillary, it's actually an honor and privilege uh, to have you with us and to give those uh, remarks. I like the way you have talked about the two sides of him, the professional and uh, the individual and how he was able to bring them together. 
and more importantly, how he almost made Kenya as a country speak with the World Bank, because as you've mentioned back in that time, they were not at uh, good talking terms. So thank you very much, uh, Jim. Um, at this point, I had mentioned, we will be having a uh, Crocker Snow uh, come on board, but I think it's good for the next speaker to know who they are. So Judith Heyer, uh, please know you shall be next on board. So Crocker Snow, I, I want to believe your relationship with Hillary uh, goes back to the time when you were at, uh, at uh, Harvard. And I think uh, he, you also got the chance to, to, to participate in the formation of your paper. But let me allow you to say it yourself. So most welcome, Crocker Snow, and we do appreciate that you found time to be with us today. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, number one, as everybody else, I'm very honored to be part of this. Can you all hear me fine? Yes, we can. Good. And I want to uh, thank all of you for uh, allowing me to participate. Um, there's a lot of things I could say, but I'll just say a few. Uh, yes, Hillary and I went to Harvard <clears throat> at the same time, uh, way back when, 1961 is when I graduated. And uh, we barely knew each other at college. We got to know each other much better after college when I started something called the World Paper that ultimately carried in 27 countries around the world. And I approached Hillary initially to be my um, associate editor for Africa. We only had eight or nine editors from different continents and they did the primary writing, uh, but they also approached me to other journalists, to publishers, <clears throat> Eventually, we were published in Nairobi, in South Africa, in Nigeria, and if I remember correctly, in Zimbabwe and in Uganda. I'm not quite sure about the Uganda, um, but that's kind of a small thing. Before going on, I want to thank Amalo for inviting me very much, and she also was involved in World Paper briefly when she was at Harvard. If I remember correctly, we had a Chinese edition, and she came by to overview the quality of our Chinese edition. So that's a part of Amalo that you may or may not know. And I also saw at times when she was starting Africa Online and other things. But back to, not, to <clears throat> excuse me, to Hillary. Um, the thing that Everything Jim said and Rose said sounds right to me uh, and sounds exactly right and brings bells with me about how Hillary had an impact on the media, on the media in Kenya and in Africa and more widely. That was my life at the time was journalism for sure. Um, the one thing specifically I want to bring on board here uh, for you all to share with me is back in the end of 1979, which is very quickly after we started World Paper and before a lot of Hillary's journalism in Nairobi, uh, that was the time that the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. And given the World Paper uh, approach to things, we were using voices around the world to speak about the parts of the world that they came from. That was the new part of world paper. We'd have a Japanese writing about Japan, not a Westerner. We'd have a Kenyan writing about um, Africa, not a Westerner. And at the time the Soviets invaded Afghanistan, we had a piece from the Soviets. At that point, uh, Gennady Gerasimov, who later became Gorbachev's spokesman, a piece from the State Department in Washington, a piece from China. And my belief was that our cover story should be from the developing world. How was the invasion of the Soviets on, at the time the Soviets, on um, uh, Afghanistan, how would it be seen by the developing world? And the first person and the best person to write about that was Hillary. And um, I will show you, I still have the old editions of World Paper. You probably will not be able to see it, 
but let me just take a minute to see if you can see it. And I don't know if this is visible. Um, hang on. This is the cover story. And if you can see it, uh, the, the headline, this was written by Hillary, and the headline was Superpowers Go Home, which was very appropriate from World Paper, very appropriate from my point of view, and a brilliant piece of journalism, most especially to me. And it's funny that I left it in my mind. To me, that was the headline as I was thinking back, but it's only in the first paragraph, which is <clears throat> to quote an old African adage, when two elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. Now, many of you have heard that over the years, I'm sure I had not. And as a proper Bostonian, that was new to me. And I thought it was sort of brilliant way of um, <clears throat> summarizing the whole situation. Um, that's the main thing I want you to remember about Hillary from my experience with him. When the elephants fight, it's the grass that suffers. And I would say now, the way the world is changing, part of the time the U.S. is the grass. We're not always the elephant any longer. And uh, the world is changing a lot since Hillary and I started in journalism, and it will continue to do so. Uh, but the elephants are different now, or they're scarred now, or whatever it might be, and the grass may be healthier in a certain type of way. But I think that adage still, um, <clears throat> still applies. Again, I'm very honored to, I like what Rose had to say, I like what Jim had to say. It all clicked with me from my experience with Hillary and his family. I did not get to Nairobi, and he did not get back to Boston. He came to some of our editors' meetings. Um, but we all stayed, we constantly stayed in touch when I was over my head about certain journalistic uh, challenges. And he would often have an answer. It wasn't always the right one, but it certainly had an answer. And most people don't have an answer and certainly don't share it in a gentle way the way Hillary did. So very much again, thank you for having me. I'm going to sit uh, here very quietly to hear what everybody else says. And I very much enjoy being part of this. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Crocker Snow. You've taken us back in time to a very monumental time in 1979 during that uh, invasion of Afghanistan by the Soviet Union. And uh, at least I didn't know that he participated in writing in the world paper. So for those who are like me, it is really enlightening. And thank you for sharing that with us. Maybe one other thing, as you said, you graduated in 61. He graduated the year after. But it's never too late to meet, as you said. And uh, it's very good that uh, things went well. The last thing is uh, the saying you're talking about the grass uh, suffering when the elephant uh, tramples it. There's a Kiswahili saying we have. Fahali wawili wakipigana ni nyasi ndio inaumia. It's exactly the same thing. So thank you very much. Now, uh, Judith Hayat, you're the one uh, coming on next. And uh, maybe the next speaker can prepare themselves. We will have the Honorable Senator Amaswako next. Um, so Judith, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I, like everybody else, feel immensely grateful and honored to be able to be part of all this. And um, having lived in Kenya only in the 1960s and up to the mid 70s, and since then in the UK. Um, there's been such an outpouring of love and appreciation for Hillary over the past few days. And I think it's all been quite overwhelming, but quite wonderful. I had no idea that he'd reached out to quite so many people in so many different ways. And it's really been inspiring to hear. I am not going to talk about his many, the many achievements in his public life that many of the others here are talking about. But I just want to say that I knew Hillary as a family friend, and it's as a family friend that I want to talk about him. He was as much part of our family as anyone else really, as, as much, and he was a part of the family as much as a person in public life, relating to each of my three children, 
as well as to myself. And um, we all valued him in very different ways and had contact with him in very different ways. There were so many things that I loved about him, his modesty, his humility, his gentleness, his way of arguing quietly and strongly, always making very strong points. As so many people have said, he was a very rare individual and somebody to emulate. I was part of a Kenya circle that overlapped only peripherally with him in the 1960s, when I was at the University of Nairobi and my husband, Sujit, was a civil servant, and both of us were involved in a lot of political activity behind the scenes. It was when our children started at Mrs. Jones's, the nursery school that gave our children such a good start, that I got to know Fleur and Hilary well. Over time, as our children grew up, we all got to see more of each other. I got to know Hilary as a person, not just as a public figure. He impressed me more and more with his wisdom, his curiosity, his sensitivity, his sense of what was important about what was going on in politics and all the undercurrents that he was in touch with, not just all the froth on the surface. He was open, he was inclusive, he was accepting as much as judging. His acceptance of what was going on, a lot of it very hard, a lot of it very bitter for him, was quite amazing, I think. And he was a measured, he had a measured and wise sense of what he believed and what he wanted to stress. I think he was a wonderful human being with no ego, holding his family, holding his own in a family of very strong women, quietly and confidently, no problem. That's rare, I think, rare these days as well as it always was. I've learned so much from him. I had so many good times with him too. He was very good company, quietly skeptical, with a great sense of humor running through it all, as all of you will know, all of you who know him will know, who knew him will know. I'm hugely grateful to Hillary for being part of my life. I shall miss him, but so much of what he was and is will live with me too. I'm much the better for having known him. I will carry that forward too. We'll continue through Fleur and Amelo and Bettina and then Oli to feel his presence throughout our lives. And subsequently, the future generations, I'm sure, will continue to live with his wisdom and his strength behind them. So thank you all very, very much for having me here. And I want to say thank you, Hilary, for being what you were. Okay. Stop there. Um, thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Judith. Um, you're really part of the family. When somebody listens to you, um, in quotes, one would actually imagine that it was one homogeneous family all living together. And you've talked about his modesty, his humility, and his gentleness. And then the other aspect that is interesting is his ability to argue, but in a very dignified, soft way, and yet still pass his point forward. I think that you've put very, very well. Now, um, we're having uh, the Honorable Amos Wako coming on next. Um, but after Amos, we shall be hearing from Lona Dias. So Lona, you can prepare your lovely voice. In the meantime, the Honorable uh, Senator uh, Amos Wako, I will allow you to introduce yourself. Your other officers, we know about them. You've been the Attorney General, you're the currently the Busia Senator, but we're very interested in your interaction with uh, Hillary. So thank you very much, Amos. You, you need to unmute. You need to unmute. Eh? The, I think you need to touch on your... Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Uh, very good. I first came to hear of Hillary Ngueno in the last years of pre-independent Kenya when he came from Harvard University and I was at the tail end of the intermediate school, which is now upper primary and was about to enter high school. 
at that time, the highest one aim at in education was to be admitted and graduate from Makerere College. And yet here was a man who had gone to the top university in the great country of United States of America, Harvard University. I and many others of my generation greatly admired him and actually held him in awe. He became our mentor. We were inspired to excel and aim beyond Makerere to the best universities in the world. And yet at the same time, he inspired us to be simple because at that time, to show that you are serious, you had to wear a suit, a black suit and uh, a tie. But here I was somebody just wearing a Kaunda suit with a beard. And yet what came from his mouth was nothing but words of wisdom. He later briefly made me a non-executive director of his company. Every week, I would get very well written voluminous documents. I was impressed by his analytical mind, his great intellect, and all the time bubbling with new and fresh ideas in diverse fields and not just the media and business. It made me wonder whether he ever sleeps as 24 hours in a day appeared not enough for the amount of work that he was doing. As Attorney General, the weekly review was a must read for me because shown of propaganda and the, the issue of mentors and so on, it had objective analysis of the events that had gone on that week. And even if some of that analysis was critical, we valued it and I valued it because it helped me to navigate the way forward on some of the very critical issues that were facing the country at that time. As Attorney General, I set up a task force to review press laws and to come up with an internal self-regulatory framework to govern the media and to really make the profession of journalism a profession. I appointed Hilary Mueno as the chairperson and the task force was launched by me and the then Minister for Information. It was a great launch and it began very well and yet proceeded excellently. But I think because of the pressure of work and the other reasons that I will explain in my memoirs. Uh, Hilary Mueno resigned and understood why he resigned and I appointed Horace Awari to replace him. Hilary is a man who believed, as a famous writer said, that truth is the breath of life to human society. Hilary committed himself to it and told it as it was. If ever there was a man of integrity, if ever there was a principal person, that person was Hilary Ngueno. And I take this opportunity to convey my very sincere condolences to his immediate and extended family 
and the people of uh, Busia County. And thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, the Honorable Amos Wako. It's nice to, for you to have shed light on how Makere University was the go-to-go -go institution then, and yet you had this uh, gentleman who had already uh, touched the waters of Harvard. Maybe what you forgot to tell the people is that you went to Alliance and he went to Mangu, and Mangu beat you at that. So that is, of course, with a light touch. Now, um, we are moving on to our next speaker, who is uh, Lona Diaz. And uh, I felt it would be also important for our next speaker to prepare themselves. It will be Adel Simons. So Adel Simons, uh, be prepared to speak after uh, Lona. So Lona, uh, I don't think you need uh, any introduction, the voice of Kenyan history and biographies. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I, I knew Bettina and Amalon High School and through them got to experience what their parents must have been like. So in my head at that time, I was thinking to myself, adventurous, incredibly creative, intense, somewhat intimidating. Even then, Hillary's aura even just his name elicited awe and wonder. Who would have thought that decades later he'd get me to narrate his documentation of our beloved country's history? Things that our history books don't tell you. Well, from 2008 through to 2018, we churned out Makers of a Nation, The Making of a Nation, Kenya's Darkest Hour, the histories of various key institutions, among others. In the beginning, we'd spend three to four hours every Saturday and Sunday morning forging through incredibly long scripts, often containing unreadably long sentences. Hillary's writing style, his initial writing style was for print and each session was a Herculean feat. Well, fortunately for me, we eventually found a workable approach to sentence length amidst teasing and mirth and panel beating uh, paragraphs pre-session and to be honest I loved almost every minute of it though despite having to forego my social life so when I'd get a particularly complex uh, lot of sentences and paragraphs down in one he'd let out a whoop and a cheer wonderful to hear but when I'd make the occasional mistake of reveling the night before the morning session would be excruciating for all of us, eliciting his stern disappointment, which, while it wasn't as brutal as I've heard others tell, it was just as crushing. When all said and done through all the sessions, smooth or otherwise, Hillary made me feel like a rock star in front of a roaring capacity audience. It was exhilarating. I loved his vision his factual way of telling his story, his steady calming presence, and his ready appreciation and encouragement. He motivated me to dig deep, to find my absolute best, to be my absolute best. He was always spot on with the business end of things and was open, honest, and genuinely apologetic when there were unexpected delays. But it wasn't all, all business, it wasn't. Once done with the sessions, he and I would walk down and out of the building lamenting about one national tribulation or another. His disappointment with the myopia in the media industry around Kenya's history, the abysmal state of current political and eco economic affairs, my own life and struggles. Around him, I was free to be my authentic self and it was everything. When his project contracts came to an end, I tried to help reaching out to various funders I knew for resources for his last unfinished pieces on the women makers of the nation. But it didn't work out. And hearing his sadness, experiencing his increasing despair was heartbreaking and somewhat annoying that others couldn't see his ultimate vision. 
So when he became increasingly frail over the course of, course of 2018, 2019, it was the hardest time ever for Jackie, our sound guru, and I. I will miss his faithfully sent national holiday SMS greetings. I will... I will miss this giant of a man who made such huge impact on my life and voiceover craft. May his soul rest in eternal peace, knowing that someone at some point in the future will complete the final documentaries he didn't get the chance to. Thank you, Fleur, Amalo, Bettina, and Olivier for allowing me to participate in Hillary's memorial. And please accept my warmest energies supporting you all at this difficult time. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, Lona. Uh, as a family, we do really appreciate the heartfelt message of condolence that you've conveyed. I think it's a great milestone that you are able to participate with Hillary in the makers of a nation, making of the nation, and all those documentaries that speak so much about this uh, great country of ours. And the fact that your voice will always be there helped really deliver that story. You mentioned something that you had to forgo your social life. I hope there's a change on that. Um, there may be somebody in the audience, but anyway, that's with a light touch. Now, I did say that our next speaker would be uh, Adele Simons. So the floor is going to be yours, but I thought also let us prepare our next speaker. So we do have uh, the distinguished lawyer, Dr. John Haminwa, who will take the floor after we have heard from Adel Simons. So Adel, the floor is yours. You, uh, you need to unmute. And um, yeah, I think just check on your screen somewhere. You need to unmute. Huh? Oh, are we able yeah, to yes. unmute for that? There we go. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. There you are. Thank um, you. And feel so, free to introduce yourself. Um, I'm Adele Simmons, and um, I've been a longtime friend of Hillary and his whole family for many, many years. Um, I first met Hillary when I was a Harvard undergraduate, and he was too. Um, in the summer of 1961, I went to Kenya. And when I came back, a group of us at Harvard who were from Africa or interested in Africa met regularly and shared stories and talked about what was happening. Um, and I really began a lasting friendship with Hillary then. Um, I visited East Africa fairly regularly. I spent time with Hillary and Fleur and later Bettina and, and Amalo. Um, and I learned much from all of them, especially Hillary. Um, Amalo stayed with us when she was living in Cambridge, Mass. And Hillary and Fleur came to visit often. Um, but it was from Hillary that I, I, I later went on to teach um, African history with a focus on East Africa. I started writing um, a thesis on East Africa, but the archives were closed by Kenyatta. So I moved off the continent to Mauritius. But I stayed in, I always stopped in Kenya on my way to and from Mauritius, and again, spent time with Hillary and Fleur. He was really special. He learned, so, I learned so much from him about what questions to ask, how to think about pieces of African history, um, and also what a really special friend could be like. Um, I will have many, many memories of time with him as I move forward. And I want to thank you all for letting me join this conversation. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Simons Adel. Um, there's no doubt about the intimacy and the closeness with which you were with, with the family. The fact that Amalo did get a chance to stay with you. And also the fact that you also did get a stint of uh, teaching uh, African history. I thought that was a very good uh, mixture of the of the cultures. Um, as I, I want to just add one thing, which was that the um, head of Crossroads Africa, who 
um, organized the first program I went to Africa with, said a wonderful thing that I think everybody can remember, which is, you may leave Africa, but Africa will never leave you. Thank you. Wow, thank you. You may leave Africa, but Africa may never leave you. That's very well put. Okay. Now that uh, I had mentioned we do have uh, John Haminua coming on, I felt it would be important for the, the speaker that will come after to prepare himself. So Justice Wamkoya, uh, please uh, be on standby as soon as we hear from uh, Dr. Haminua. Haminua uh, needs no introduction, household name in the legal fraternity uh, in Kenya, senior counsel and a past uh, a legal uh, practitioner uh, for the weekly review. John, the floor is yours. Uh, I, thank you very much. Hearing Weno, as I knew him. Um, when I left uh, my public job as deputy counsel of the South African community in 1973, I decided to join private legal practice. Um, and uh, I teamed up with my wife as a partner in the legal practice. We, our first office was in Esso House, which is now referred to as Jubilee Exchange. That's the time I met Hilary Ngueno. I had the honor and the privilege of being an advocate, with my firm being advocates to his uh, companies and to matters, personal matters that he had at that time. I was really impressed by the personality of Hilary Ngueno. When I attended the last mass on Thursday, one thing I learned was that, which I had always thought of him, Hillary had tremendous love for Nairobi. He talked very well of Nairobi. And you could see in him that he wanted to make Nairobi a big city that would cater for all the tribes of Kenya and all the races of Kenya. Uh, as a, could create it as a cosmopolitan kind of uh, town or city for everybody. This, I came to learn that Hillary was born in Nairobi, was brought up in Nairobi during the colonial days, and he had had the experience of uh, the discrimination that occurred during those days of the colonial days. He had also experienced the way the majority of Africans were not really very highly thought of. And he thought that the education he had received he was very excellent education, having gone through a leading high school of Mango, having gone through a leading university of the world, Harvard. He thought that he would uh, devote his energies in making Nairobi a place where people of all races, of all tribes, of all religions would gather. And he did so very well by using his pen, the weekly review, and other newspapers that he created. He was able to analyze articles that came up in the newspapers. He was able to train young African journalists. He was able to demonstrate to the world that the local people in Kenya can do very well, can do much better than other people had thought of them. And did this earned him a good name, not only in Kenya, but also in Africa and in the world. I recall one time we met at an uh, um, intercontinental hotel when he brought all people from all walks of life together. By then, I can't remember which paper that he was uh, uh, now uh, uh, putting to the public. Uh, but I believe that it was one of the financial times or what and so on at that particular time. We all felt very proud of Hillary. Now, speaking personally, I had problems during Moy's time. 
And I can remember very vividly, uh, we went, there was a time when actually it was quite clear that I was going to be detained. And I recall here, he came and picked me up from my office and we went and hid ourselves in a hotel. Uh, uh, by that time it was known as Kilimani, uh, Kimani Hotel, which later became Meridian Hotel. Uh, the hotel was near Ismailia Mosque on Moy Avenue. We spent time there quietly with Hillary and one or two other people, and he gave me encouragement. Uh, he strengthened me. He made me uh, see that, look, although I was about to be detained, but I had some strong people around me who would care for me, who would try to see how they could assist, or to, or could assist me. Now, Hillary, uh, talking from my professional uh, position, stood for independence of judiciary, stood for independence of the bar, and stood for independence of uh, the prosecution. He was a man who wanted to see Kenya a better place. He was a man who wanted to see Kenya seen in the world as a country that uh, should be admired. And may I say, I hesitate to say this, but I think I should say it. I think that if all of us had the approach Hillary had to Kenya, if all of us worked as hard as Hillary worked uh, for his newspapers, Kenya would be in the first world, would no longer be a developing country at all. Kenya would be seen as the first world. Now that he has left us, what, is, what do we think we can do for him? May I say this? We should honor Hillary. We should find a way of honoring Hillary. He belonged to a unique class. He was the best among us. Can we think of, or our senators or our politicians, can we think of naming a road in Nairobi as Hillary Ngueno Road? Can we think of naming a street as Hillary Ngueno Street? It is not enough to say that we have a center for him at Moi uh, University. Hillary deserves to have a position in the city of Nairobi. We have named some people in Nairobi, given names some streets of, of individuals in Nairobi who are absolutely nowhere what Hillary did for us. Moi's regime was not a first class regime, but Moi, Hillary was able to portray to the world that there was still hope in Kenya after Moi. He was able to show the world that Kenya was still a democracy. He was able to show the world that there was still hope in Kenya there would be rule of law in the country. Let us try to honor Hillary by giving him a, a street in Nairobi, by giving him a road in, in Nairobi, so that the, the future generations can see that here was a man whom we should try to emulate. Thank you very much. Wow. When you get to hear a presentation from John Haminua, as you've put it, um, you've left us uh, speechless. I think in summary, um, this being a public forum, I'm sure the powers that be right from the office of the president to parliament will hear you. Uh, John, you're well known to this country when you speak. And I am almost sure that that dream of Hillary Ngueno, born in Nairobi, bred in Nairobi, fought for Nairobi using his pen, will see the light of day. I also believe that since we do have the media fraternity with, with us here, most likely in tomorrow's dailies, the word will start going out and we give them that responsibility as a minimum. We do know that Hillary has a center at a university, at Moy University, we do know that Hillary Ngueno was one of the 50 people accorded honors when Kenya attained 50 years of independence. In that list of 50, Hillary was there, but that is not enough. So thank you very much. I will not say anything more. The last thing I'll just say on that is that I like what you said 
He went to a great school, Mangu. He went to a great university, Harvard. I leave it at that. Our next speaker is uh, Justice Wampoya, who actually comes from the institution where we do have a center for Hillary Nguyen. And I think after that, I would like uh, Chachi Lotieno uh, to prepare himself as uh, the next speaker after Wamkoya. So Justice, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Steve Owundo and the family for uh, giving me this opportunity to be part of uh, this great uh, panel, uh, paying tribute to uh, Hillary's life. I am really honored uh, for having known Hillary over the years. And uh, for me, uh, Hillary will always be remembered in our hearts because uh, first and foremost, uh, Hillary uh, bequeathed Moy University and uh, you know, by extension, uh, this country, this great heritage of his works that uh, he accumulated over the years. And uh, these works, I have no doubt that they will live on long after him. Already, the materials that uh, comprise of uh, bound copies of the weekly review, uh, bound copies of, uh, uh, the, uh, of Rainbow, and uh, many other collections, including uh, hundreds and, and hundreds of videos and photos that he donated to Moy University uh, have formed a great center that inspired the Moy University Senate uh, to agree to set up uh, this uh, resource center in his name. And this is the, uh, the Hillary Nguyeno uh, Center for uh, East African Research in Media. Uh, this is something that is already inspiring young scholars many of whom did not even know Hillary, but you know, the older faculty in the university you know, have used this material so far you know, to begin to educate the young generation of who Hillary was, and in particular, what he represented in terms of uh, representing uh, the bridge between the nascent days of journalism in this country and the journalism today and in the future. So Hillary's spirit will never die uh, through this great heritage that uh, he has left at Moy University. The materials will not only be beneficial to scholars at Moy University and professionals in the media industry, but across Af East Africa and across uh, Africa and uh, perhaps the world. Personally, I will remember that uh, when I was a, a student, uh, initially as a, a student of literature, and thereafter a student of archival science, I was a very keen reader of the weekly review. And thereafter, of course, I also paid a lot of attention to the makers of a nation. And what inspired me most personally was the depth and the intellectual uh, flair of Hillary's writings. And this is something that uh, runs across many people. Many people that have come across within the university have always mentioned, you know, that uh, this was a great piece of writing and something that benefited them. Many of the old professors and the uh, lecturers uh, in the university today, many of them at least had a chance to look to read Hillary Nguyen's weekly review. And also, just like I mentioned during the, uh, the mass uh, for Hillary, is that uh, when I joined uh, the University of London as a, a doctoral student, one of the things that really inspired me, because I thought the weekly review was just something that was confined to Kenya or East Africa, but I was inspired by the fact that every, every week, uh, SOAS, that is the School of Oriental and African Studies at the University of London, used to receive two copies of the weekly review. And I was amazed at uh, the queues yeah, that were always there to make a booking uh, to be able to access the weekly review. They were really 
inspired by the commentaries that uh, Hillary uh, you know, made on various political, social, and economic issues you know, across East Africa. Hillary handled so many delicate subjects, but it was also you know, uh, of great, uh, uh, something great to note that he handled these issues with a lot of uh, sobriety, a, a lot of uh, 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 independence, and of course, uh, very objective uh, in his reporting as well. Now, I also speak for more university senate. Uh, uh, the university is very keen uh, to expand uh, the Hillary Ngueno Center uh, so that these materials you know, can be uh, extended to many people across the world. And the way to do this is, of course, to ensure that the materials are digitized so that uh, we can be able to share the materials online. And that way, Hillary's name you know, will continue to live on. I think you know, I can speak for the School of Information Sciences. Uh, it, the School of Information Sciences you know, considered it a big honor for them to be considered by Hillary you know, as the home of his materials and his works. And I think we shall do all we can uh, to ensure that these materials are well looked after and they're well preserved. I think uh, with those few remarks, I would also like to uh, pay my gratitude and also extend my further condolences to the family. And uh, just to say that may uh, uh, Hillary's soul rest in eternal peace. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Justice from uh, Moyu University. As you very eloquently put it, Hillary's spirit will never die. And one of the things I like about Moyo University, in Kiswahili we have the saying, kuna kusema na kuna kutenda. So Moyo University did not just speak, but they acted. And through their, uh, their actions, we now do have a physical indelible ink that has been left in our country and beyond. And I also like the fact that you are going to the next step with regards to the expansion by looking at digitizing all the material that is there. So as a family, once again, we say a big, big, big thank you uh, to Moy University. Now I had mentioned that we'll be having a Churchill uh, Otieno next. And after Churchill, I would like uh, Ingolo Akea to prepare himself as the next speaker. So the floor right now is yours, um, Churchill Otieno get the chance to do a, a quick uh, brief self-introduction. And also for our viewers, I know many of you have had your hands up. You probably would want to say one or two things, but the key thing is we will uh, see how we'll be able to open up that space if possible uh, as we conclude. So let's move on to uh, Churchill, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Stephen Awundo, uh, for giving me this chance. Um, as we told, my name is Chachi Lotieno. I'm, uh, I'm the digital editor at Nation Media Group. But I join you this afternoon as the president of the Kenya Editors Guild, um, bringing a message of condolence and uh, coming to commiserate with the family. Um, on behalf of the editors of Kenya and on the larger behalf of the journalism fraternity in our nation. It's in, indeed a great honor and privilege that uh, the Ngueno family lent us Hillary. Because in Hillary, Kenya got a father of journalism. Journalists in Kenya look up to Hillary as a professional father. Even though, as we stand today, many of them never got to interact with him, because many of them, many of us are way younger to have been active at that point in time. But through his mentorship, through his leadership, and through his intellectual fortitude, we see his mentees amongst us. They are professional greats, they remain strong, and they remain examples of virtue on values that are the pillars 
that critical and independent journalism go by. Through them, our seniors who worked with Hillary at the Weekly Review and at the Nairobi Times, we see commitment to what journalism should be. And what a time that commitment should be presented to us. A time when disinformation is all over the world. A time when many, many media enterprises are going through difficult times in terms of business models. We find a father who not only believed in the values of journalism, not only believed in comforting the uncomfortable, and not only believed in enterprises that not just existed for bottom lines, but existed in giving a voice to the people, existed in showering light into dark areas that many powerful and influential did want to. When we read about his life, we find many examples of you know, turning points that he got to, but he chose the difficult options because the difficult options many times stood with the larger majority uh, of the people. Through the people he molded, we see wisdom presented with humility. We see a character grounded in issues. We see a master storyteller. We see a career and a vocation that was purposeful, not just for the ends of creating and sustaining a life. We at the Kenya Editors Guild were lucky that we got a chance last year to honor him for distinguished service. And indeed, out of a strong nudge and urge from colleagues in many newsrooms of Kenya today and many places in the world, the Guild will be convening on Wednesday, the 21st of July. To just get a moment for the profession to honor a father. To honor a father at a time when the world calls upon journalists of character to be courageous, to stand up and to go beyond the simple and the flimsy and help us define a future. Because in journalism, we have a mirror of society. We play back to society what it looks like, but we also have a responsibility of being a torch by sharing light on what directions would help all of us. So once more on behalf of the journalists of Kenya and on behalf of the editors in our country, Amolo, Bettina, and the entire Nguyeno family, we thank you and the world thanks you for lending us a great man because for him, for his entrepreneurship, for his commitment to the profession, many of us today find a place to serve. May the good Lord keep his eternal peace. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you very, very much, uh, President of the Kenya Editors Guild, uh, Chachi Lotieno, for that very, very uh, moving message of condolence to the family, which we, we do appreciate. Also, as a family, we do appreciate the fact that you did take it in your stride and honor him at the end of the last year, that the family has been forever grateful for that. We are also at a loss of words for the fact that you're still taking another step further. And on Wednesday next week, as uh, the media fraternity, you wished uh, to honor our dear Hillary. Uh, we appreciate the fact that you, you saw him as one who, who shed light in the darkness and set forth the direction in which we are in terms of media. Um, thank you very much, uh, Churchill, for that. Now, I had uh, said that we would be having uh, Ingolo uh, Wakea next. And uh, as Ingolo uh, takes uh, center stage, I would like uh, Masharia Gaido uh, to prepare to be the next speaker after Ingolo. Ingolo, um, I remember you 
Uh, I find it very interesting that you actually write because when we were with you at Weekly Review, I never saw you smile. So let's see what kind of facial expression you're going to give us today as you make your presentation. Uh, Ingolo, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm in the village, so you can only see trees, but uh, uh, I'm sure you can also see my face somewhere. Yeah, maybe uh, what you can do just turn a bit Ingolo, okay, so yeah. that the bush is behind you. Just turn a bit, just a bit, so that you, just a bit, I think, if I'm not distracting you too much. Uh -huh. Yes, there, good. There you are. Perfect. And uh, I'm sure people will say I don't speak the truth because they've seen you smile. But anyway, carry on. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is Ingolo Akea. Uh, basically, I'm a, a filmmaker, uh, an independent filmmaker. Uh, and to me, um, I must say, Hilary Mueno actually was uh, a mentor that you cannot just very easily, you know, uh, describe, you know, in a sentence or in a paragraph. Uh, the nine years that I actually worked with him uh, actually made me into, or rather polished me into, into a good filmmaker and particularly for documentaries. Uh, I joined Hillary uh, in 1986 uh, from the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. And you know very well uh, the working conditions and how people work in the civil service is quite different from the way people work in the, uh, you know, in the private sector. So by joining him, it actually gave me a chance and it actually prepared me to go even further and be my own, be my own boss, uh, be, be my own uh, independent, you uh, know, in, in a producer. That is something that I really cherish, you know, uh, cherish about uh, Hillary. And as I'd, uh, I mentioned some time, uh, Hillary was somebody who would give you, because you see, this is a creative, uh, a creative enterprise. It's a creative world. He will never uh, interfere with the creative thought of somebody, or he will give you creative control, but only give you some guidance in terms of what, you know, what, what he thinks you should be, you know, should, you know is right. Uh, but he, he, gave, he gave people creative control. All the producers, all the directors that were working with him at Stellar Graphics, he gave us a lot of creative control. And that actually made us actually to, to be more uh, confident in our work and to be able to produce uh, documentaries for the various uh, uh, organizations, the government bodies, uh, NGOs, all the documentaries you know, you know, we, we produced uh, were actually under his direction, yes, but the creative control was actually our, you know, our own. And that is something that actually really helped us. And particularly myself, when I left in 1994, you know, to, you know, to be on my own. So I've actually been able to survive thanks to the confidence and, uh, you know, and the wise uh, guidance that actually I got from, from Hillary. Okay, and apart from just having worked with him, I think Hillary was a big asset to, the, you know, to Kenya's film industry. He had a very big vision because I think when he came back from the US, uh, I think after his second uh, sojourn, he actually came back here with, with, a, with a camera, a film camera, and an editing, an editing bench. And his idea was that he really wanted, you know, you know to produce content, which, which is, you know, you know, you know, for, you know for, for, for television, as well as for the theaters. Uh, the only hindrance that at least we had at that time is that uh, it was very expensive. It was very expensive for anybody to actually, you know, you know, do anything on film, especially if, you, if you're doing a, maybe a feature film or even a documentary. So he actually even had the, the you know, the idea to be able to produce raw stock, film raw stock, you know, to compete with the Kodak and, uh, and the Fuji, yeah. And he even went further to, you know, to, you know, to seek funds. Uh, I remember he, uh, uh, I was being told he, he, he you know, he, he sought funds from uh, ICDC at that time. 
uh, if ICDC had been uh, uh, receptive and, and enough, Kenya actually would have would have had a factory or a manufacturing plant for you know you know for film raw stock, and that would have been made it very easy for for a lot of Kenyan filmmakers and not only Kenyans but even people in the region to be able to shoot you know to shoot on film. Well, uh, apart from that, his interest was to see Kenyans tell their stories. His interest was to have our televisions actually full of local, or full of, you know, of, of local content. Yeah, and that's why he spent a lot of time with us, even before I joined, because you know, that was now in the mid eighties, even before I joined him, he used to come to our meetings when we were actually agitating the government, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to set up the film commission, for example, and to set up structures that will help uh, the country and you know, uh, you know, develop develop its capacity to move away from just being a location for filmmakers from Hollywood and uh, in and Europe to come and film here, but for Kenyans to be able to film, I mean, to, you know, you know, to produce their own their own films and make use of the fantastic sceneries that actually Kenya, you know, you know, Kenya, you know, Kenya has. And at one time, he even told us, he even talked of his vision of utilizing the empty space, you know, the, you know that massive space in the northeastern province, for example, as a location, as a location for a film, for, you know, for films, you know, uh, uh, depicting the kind of struggle that the anti-stock safe unit, for example, you know, you know, uh, uh, undergo. Uh, you know, by having you know, you know, by you know, by having the communities um, understand that actually uh, stock, you know, uh, you know, you know, cattle, cattle rustling was, you know, should not be, you know, should, should not be the stock, should not be the stock in trade. So his idea was to begin to create, you know, to, you know, to, you know, to develop firms feature films or you know or, or either for for tv or for the theaters that actually depict our heroes the anti-stock theft unit you know as heroes in trying to stomp you know to you know to stomp uh you know to stamp out the uh the cut rustling menace that was actually in the in, in, in you know in, in northeastern so apart from being a, a journalist, you know, apart from being a journalist and running the, you know, the uh, the weekly review, uh, the financial review, Hillary had a very big passion for film, and it was just that we never had very uh, accommodative governments that actually would have taken in Hillary's ideas of how we could develop this country into a great, you know, uh, into great film production. Uh, uh, either destination or have you know as many films being produced by Kenyans themselves telling the African telling the African stories. Um, the other thing I remember about him, and uh, I remember the period in around nine, you know the nineties, just before the multipartism, uh, the clamor for multipartism, you know when it began. And a lot of government agencies, a lot of even the media were, were also not very keen <laughs> on supporting multipartism. I remember him in, uh, in one of the uh, seminars, I don't know which one exactly, he just made one statement which, which, really, <laughs> which really triggered a lot, of, you know, a lot of conversations. And uh, if I can just quote him, he said, uh, death, no, he said, change, just like death, is inevitable. Yeah, this was just before Moi went ahead, you know, to repeal the the, the Section Two A of the you know of the of the of our old constitution. So, to me, Hillary, apart from being a good teacher, an excellent uh, mentor, he, he was looking at Kenya in totality and he really wished, you know, the best uh, the best for this country. So, for me, in the film industry. I think 
we, we, we lost an opportunity. We lost, the country lost an opportunity to ride on, you know, on the vision, yeah? And, uh, you know, on the vision that Hillary had, you know, for, you know, for, you know, for this country. So it's, uh, it's a pity we are talking about it now, but that's exactly what, you know, to me, I feel is we have lost somebody who really had very good intentions, uh, intentions for the, you know, for this, for this country. And uh, on my behalf and on behalf of my film, you know, filmmakers uh, who are like-minded like me, uh, I wish to, you know, pass my condolences to the family of, of Hillary Ngueno and to Kenya, you know, in particular. Thank you. All right, Buona uh, Ingolo. Uh, thank you first and foremost for smiling. That was really nice. But I really like the perspective you've brought in today's forum, which is the line of the filmmaking aspect of Hillary. I also like the way you've talked. He did not dictate what you should do. He gave you guidance, but all the creative control remained in your hands. And uh, the fact that he promoted innovation and creativity. Not too many people know Hillary as a guitar person, Hillary the film. They seem to know him more as a writer, yet he had so much in him, larger than life. We as a family really, really appreciate those special attributes that you have uh, presented to us here. Now, uh, I did mention uh, that one of the great successful offsprings in journalism uh, will be coming on next. Uh, his name is uh, Masharia Gaido. Uh, and after Masharia, um, nobody can see on the screen. I do have a presentation here from one special gentleman. His name is uh, Canon uh, Honorable Justice Ogola. You did hear when Hamino was speaking that Hillary fought for an independent judiciary. And so we're going to have a very special message on that. So let me pass on the floor to uh, Masharia Gaido, but I still think that that punching line that Ingolo finished with needs to be repeated. Change, just like death, is inevitable. Over to you, uh, Bona Masharia. Um, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Amalo, Bettina, uh, Steve, and the, and the rest of the family for, for this. I, I've already said and written so much about Hillary. I'm wondering who to say that is different, but I will try because I don't want to repeat myself. Um, in many workplaces in Kenya, you will have the Alliance Mafia, the Manguhai Mafia, uh, the St. Mary's Mafia. When I worked at the Nation uh, Media Group uh, from 2000, from the year 2000 and onwards, some of us were referred to as the weekly review mafia. And there was myself, of course, uh, Joe Dindo, Judio Getcha, Betty Morioki, Muteki Jao, Jaindi Kisero, Sami Wambua, Joe Budia, Kibe Kimoyo, Lucy Yurian, and a few others. And I think even if you went to across the, to our rivals at uh, the standard group, I think you would also have found a substantial level a weekly review mafia in senior positions. And, and that is so telling. I have mentioned that in the past that I joined weekly review in 1986 without any training in journalism, without any experience in journalism, not even a letter, I'm not even having had a letter to the editor published. And, 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 and that's how it was. And it was remarkable even that I was hired because my, my, I, my application letter was very cheeky. But uh, I went through an interview and um, that's it. Of course, I, I would also want to acknowledge the role played by Sarah Eldakin and Peter Karaidi, who were the ones who interviewed me and of course recommended that, that I be hired. And, and from then on, I realized something that uh, the fellows I found in the newsroom were my contemporaries, all of them uh, would give or take a few years. And none of them were trained journalists. Another thing that struck me is that I used to think that Hillary writes 
the weekly review virtually by himself. I got there and I found that apart from the editorial, the leader, the rest was written by that bunch of guys in that newsroom, 100%. And there I was starting to write, it's called, I, I mean, I think I used to call it starting journalism from the top because weekly review was really at the top of the ladder when it comes to, to journalism, journalism uh, excellence in Kenya. And there is another thing he never used to tell us. Uh, sometimes we say publish and be damned. He used to tell us publish and survive to publish tomorrow. And that I think explains the differences he had with uh, some of the um, activist circles, especially during the, the clamor for, for change. There was a group of academics at the University of Nairobi. Um, you know, William Mutunga, Shadrach Guto, uh, Katama Mutangi, and, and, and others, who I think in 19, late 70s, early 80s, were attracting the attention of uh, the special branch, and you know what that meant. And they felt that Hillary was too conservative in his approach to the, to the Moi regime. Yet previously, Hillary was seen as too radical in terms of what he's publishing on politics. So there are, there are always these, uh, contradictions within, 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 within all of us. And at, but at the end of the day, I think uh, excellence wins out. The other day, uh, I think it was on Wednesday, I spent the whole afternoon at the National Media Group uh, Library, just going, going back through past issues of the weekly review. And I was amazed at the scope and breadth of what he was doing. Because uh, just flipping through the covers, I see it was not just about Kenyan politics. It covered events in uh, Uganda, Somalia, Tanzania, Ethiopia, all the countries around us, and further to Ghana, Nigeria, Libya, South Africa, of course, and Rhodesia and Mozambique. You know, it, 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 it was like a, a gold mine, really. It's a gold mine, really. And that is what reminded me that I am mourning Hillary twice. What happened is um, some four years ago, I was moving house. I had a collection of bound volumes of the weekly review dating back from 1986 when I joined up to the time it folded. Then there were many, many boxes and boxes of boxes of previous editions, which um, I had not yet put in any order, which I would say I inherited from my father and Joe Magazine. And they were just in boxes and boxes and boxes. So I had taken all those boxes and put them somewhere in storage because I was moving house. Now it took me a long time to go and retrieve them because it took a long time to complete my, the house I was going to move to. Finally, when I finished building my house, um, the space where I'll put those things, I went to the place where I'd, I'd had them stored and I found they had been invaded by termites and almost totally destroyed. I'm telling you, I cried. And, and, and when I went to the National Library the other days, I realized, oh dear, what, 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 how did this happen? How did I allow this to happen? Why did I put these things in a place which is not secure? And uh, you know, that was, I, I, I I, I am mourning him for the second uh, time. And 
That is why when we have these resources, please let us take care of them. And my appeal is to the, the Mo University. Please, please, please take very, very good care of the gold mine you have been presented. Because there's nothing else like it. It, it, it is not just about journalism. It is actually the history of Kenya told as it unfolded. It cannot be repeated. I know there are bound uh, some collections of the National Archives. I don't know how well they are kept. I know there is some collection at the Macmillan Library. I don't know how well they are kept. But I think as a media fraternity, we, we probably ought to, to visit those institutions and see for ourselves um, if they've been well kept, they're well preserved, and if there's anything we can do uh, to help. Uh, finally, my president, uh, Chachi Lotieno, mentioned that we're having an event uh, next week, Wednesday. It will really be a, a, a retrospective on Hillary and his life and his work. And uh, people of all shades of opinion, including his critics, uh, have been uh, invited. I think I, I, I can take it upon myself to, to, to ask all of, there will be the links where you can all, all, all join in. But I would like to suggest that beyond a discussion on Hillary and his life and times, as a media in uh, fraternity in Kenya, we do need to do something uh, very permanent in a, a remembrance. And for me, what comes to mind is what we, who learned at his feet can do for those who are behind us, those who are running the newsrooms today and all the other young uh, journalists who could benefit with guidance, uh, mentorship, training, and everything else we have to offer. Uh, rest in peace, Hillary. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very, very, very much, uh, Mashari Agaido. I called you one of uh, his great icons in terms of uh, the descendants. And you see, you said you've been speaking many times and each time you speak, it's fresh breath, it's new information. I don't even think anybody knew about the Alliance Mafia, the Mamu Mafia, the St. Mary's Mafia, and now the Weekly Review Mafia. So Mafia seems to be quite widespread. I, th I think I also like the fact what you've talked about the, the writing of the Weekly Review. He only partook in the editorial and the rest of the writing he delegated to the likes of you. And yet holistically, it came out very well. So I think that's lovely. And then the challenges also in terms of uh, his work. On one time you are found to be too soft. On one time you are found to be too hard. So you are doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. I think that you've brought out very well. But greatly what you have told us here and from the unfortunate incidents in which you experienced where termites uh, did invade uh, your library. And I hear you imparting onto more university, please, please preserve what is there. I think we can once again say a big thank you to more university because the fact that they've actually created the center and you've also had them tell us today that they actually want to digitalize a lot of what is there. I think that will help. And last but not least, um, 21st of July, um, as the president has, uh, of Guild has said, they're going to have uh, the, I mean the, the day for discussion about Hillary. And you've mentioned that it's very important. You learned from him. Now, how do you pass on that to the next generation and uh, live in posterity? I think that will be really, really good. Thank you again. And we do appreciate uh, the accolades. I mean, the, the message of condolence that you actually did give. Uh, previously and continue to give. We can never say thank you enough. Now, um, just for purposes of, as I had mentioned, I do want to read here a very special uh, tribute. It's titled Hillary Weno, 1938 to 2021. The title is Priest of Politics. This is the message of condolence from Canon Justice James Ogola. 
some were professors of politics, some active practitioners on the political stage, and some the unseen managers behind the scenes, pulling the levers of influence to turn the direction of the political whirlwinds. Hillary was none of the above. Rather, he was the high priest straddling the altar of Kenyan politics. He brought light into the darkness recesses of the political spectrum. He brought sanity to the mayhem that often divide, drives our political marathon. He brought clarity in the misty enigma of our politics. And to adversaries, he brought the candle of reconciliation and healing by sheer weight of his reason and logic. Hillary, the consummate scientist, applied the surgeon's knife to slice through the tough hide of our political process, to lay bare the body politic of our society. And his pulpit for doing all this was his extensive and expansive journalistic fiefdom. For this, we as a nation owe Hillary a huge debt for his having been a rare gift to our political space, spanning such a long time. Though he spent close to a lifetime around the stages of politics, Hillary never himself descended into the arena of political activity. He never became a political activity, activist, let alone a practitioner of the political game. He never ran for elective office, nor aspired to any. The one and only time, and this was more than once, that he held uh, public po uh, positions, they did not last and he let go of them in a blink of an eye. Rather, Hillary remained a scholar, a pundit, a profound journalist, pondering the goings on of the game, a passionate but detached observer, studiously analyzing the game from the sidelines of the playing field. Little wonder that one of his many memorable journalistic legacies, The Weekly Review, a journal that suddenly burst onto the public domain with explosive force and remained indelible in the public psyche. Born of Samia parents, a community that cuts across both Kenya and Ugandan borders, he found his niche in the Kenyan soil. He was the central pillar on which the giant house of Mze Morris Onyango Gweno rested the bulk of its heavy load. His younger brother, Anthony, the second pillar of the illustrious house, passed on only less than a year ago at their ancestral home. And now Hillary, and now Hillary rapidly follows suit into the footsteps of the ancestors, a journey from which no traveler returns. At a personal level, Hillary, my own uncle paternally, but nephew maternally, enormously enriched my book of poetry, Songs of Paradise, when around the year 2008, he accepted to read through and comment on my manuscript for that book. With characteristic agility and acuity, Hillary brought out the surgeon's knife and scissors to rip through the manuscript and then to surgically secure the pieces back together, leaving the book what it is today. He was a priestly mission, a pious calling. Let's mourn bitter tears over him. But in due season, we must let Hillary move on to the rendezvous with his final destiny. May God, the merciful, the beneficent, find Hillary a place to abide at the high table of majesty. And there may his soul rest in bliss and eternity. Yours, Canon Justice James Ogola, Kampala, Uganda. I thought it was important uh, to share that. Um, I know we had uh, quite a number of us who had wanted to speak today, and it's a bit of a challenge because of the time. 
So at this juncture, allow me to uh, once again pass on my condolences to the family. And I think I would like to pass on the microphone first to Bettina, who shall give uh, a vote of thanks. And thereafter, I believe Amolo can wrap us up. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. And for those of you who don't know me, my name in brief is Stephen Boniface, George Buire Wandera Oundo, Order of the Grand Warrior of Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen, very much. Our cousin Stephen, as we call him, Stevo. So you can add that to his many names. And thank you all very much for your words, your kindness, your information, and your love for our father. We appreciate it so much. And we learn so much every time people speak. And as I heard the whole panel speak and the different speakers um, throughout this week, and even in reading um, editorials and uh, comments, and uh, there's um, a few things that stick out that I think are particularly interesting. You describe my father basically as someone with extreme curiosity, someone with attention to detail, someone with precise rigor, and a very sharp ability to analyze. And all of that done through a social justice perspective. And I think those things are very uh, real in all of his life since he was young. My dad endlessly escaped going to school. He ran away many times. I used to ask him how he learned how to walk so fast in Nairobi and it would never, he would always see people before they saw him. And he said it was because when he would escape school, his uncle who, um, Longinus, who was very tall, would be sent to look for him. And so he had to see him first. And so he would run away in the streets and find him. So I asked my dad, why, why did you hate school? And he said, no, I like school very much. In fact, I did all these lovely things, art and whatever at school. It just that there was so much else to know. And so he didn't really want to be stuck knowing things in one space. And I think that that space was really, as you have all said, even as a child, it was this curiosity for something bigger, something more to know, little time to spend on only one thing. Uh, so you're always doing multiple different things. And I just want to say one other thing. I, I um, echo uh, Mashari Gaido's comment and uh, John Hamwinma's comment about uh, his 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 um, uh, materials at uh, Moy University, their preservation, their accessibility. Because the other thing you all talked about was my dad as a teacher, in a sense, as an educator, as someone who worked with people in order to have a better product for him, for them, and uh, for all the audiences that are there. When we were cleaning out my dad's office to send it to um, more university, there was one thing we found that I was very struck by, um, which is the social justice side that people might know less of. And it was a receipt for a donation um, to Pio Pinto's wife to help her in exile after he had been assassinated. And so I often think my dad had an idea about um, the people who stood for the average man that was part of the person um, he was aiming at with the weekly review and um, who he saw himself talking with all the time. And so uh, in talking to all other people, that was also who, who he was talking with and to. So I want to thank you for reflect, reflecting that and all of your comments and for the time you spent making him who he was as much as he made you who you are. Thank you very much. I don't think I could say uh, better than anything my sister said, but I just um, pick up on one thing that several of you have said, which is that when you were with him, he would give you his undivided attention. And I think that's a special talent that um, several of our cousins have mentioned they would try and do in their own lives. 
And I think that's something we would want to carry forward as well. So thank you for giving us your attention today. And thank you so much. Okay. Thank you very, very much, uh, uh, Bettina and Amalo. Um, on behalf of the family, I would like to once again pass our sincere gratitude first to every single panelist who did find time today to be with us as you made your presentations and you paid your tribute and your last respects to our dear great dad, uncle, friend, enigma within the journalist. I mean, the, 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 the words we can use are just too many. So we'll just mention those, but a few. The participants and the attendees who have all been with us all this time, I'm sure there's something else you could have done on the, your Saturday afternoon, but you opted to be with us today. That we do not take for granted. Um, I also would like to thank Auntie Fla. She didn't manage to be on us with us as a panelist, but she's there. And I can tell you one thing that Auntie Fla most, uh, liked most from all the panelists today. If Auntie Fla was to give a vote on who had the best background amongst all the panelists today, that award would go to Ingolo, because Ingolo is the one who opted to be outside in the trees and bring nature with us. I think with those few words, uh, let me say thank you to all of you. And um, I think we've done very well with our timing. Um, Uncle Hillary, Boniface Mueno, I know you're watching down on us. This is just a tip of the iceberg of what you have done for the Society of Kenya, East Africa, Africa, and the world at large. Thank you.